Hello, this is Vicki, the creator over here at Golden Goodies. Today I am back with another video. We are learning how to make cold processed soap. So first things first, we have to have on our protective gear. We want to make sure we are wearing gloves, long sleeves, long pants, and protective wear for our feet. No sandals or flip flops or anything like that. And we also want to have goggles to protect our eyes. So I am going to start off by measuring my hard butters. In this recipe today, I am going to be using shea butter, mango butter, coconut oil, palm oil, and olive oil. So the only one of those that is a liquid oil is the olive oil. So I'm going to measure everything else out right now. <laughs> butters measured out I'm going to add my olive oil right on top of my butter mix <music> to make our lye water so I need everybody to pay close attention here so lean in turn your volume up do whatever you have to do but pay attention so first things first we are going to measure out our distilled water again we are not using tap water we are not using spring water distilled water only so I am measuring that here and now we're gonna grab our lye aka sodium hydroxide you cannot make soap without sodium hydroxide the process of mixing the butters and oils with the sodium hydroxide is called saponification at the end of the process the curing process there will be no more lye in the soap so it is safe to use but um, at this point, I want you to be very careful. This is why we're wearing our protective gear because we do not want the sodium hydroxide to come into contact with our skin. So be very careful when you are measuring this. So that's measured out. Now, this next step is very important. We are going to make sure we are adding our sodium hydroxide to our water. We never wanna do it the other way around. Never add your water to your sodium hydroxide because that will create a chemical reaction that you do not wanna see. So as you can see here, I added the sodium hydroxide to the water and it's going to get really hot. So I'm gonna take my spatula and just move the sodium hydroxide around a little bit because we want it to completely dissolve in the water and as it's doing that um, it's just heating up right now so i'm going to take it into the garage just so it can air out so we don't want the fumes all in the house gonna bring it back in and it should still be hot right now we're looking at um for me it was 167 degrees 
Typically we want it to be a little bit hotter than that, but this was fine because in this method, which is called the heat transfer method, we are going to use our hot sodium hydroxide water to melt our butters. And that's what you're gonna see me do here. I'm just gonna keep stirring and stirring and stirring until the butters are completely melted. are melted I'm just going to give it a final stir here before pulling out my stick blender so that we can start the blending <music> going to keep stick blending until we have a light trace. Once you have a light trace, that lets you know that the lye water and the oils have fully emulsified. As you can see here, I'm checking for a trace. I pull the stick blender out of the soap and the soap that drips down creates a small layer on top of the soap batter. So that lets me know I have a trace and that my soap is fully emulsified. So now I am going to transfer the soap into smaller containers so that I can split the colors. For this soap, I decided to do a pink, a brown, and a white. Um, I just decided to do this because I'm using the scent of Japanese cherry blossom, and those are the colors that I usually see when I see this flower. You see the pink, you see the white, and then you always see the brown branch. It's always in the picture. So I just wanted to depict that as well. <music> fragrance to my separated batches of soap. Next you're going to see me grab my mica so we can add our color to the soap. see me adding here is titanium dioxide mixed with olive oil that's going to give my soap batter that white color or whitish color because it's not going to get exactly white but white enough now you see me adding my pink back there and then I'm going to add a chocolate brown to my last container <music> micas to my soap batter now you can just see me mixing here you want to make sure you're mixing very thoroughly because sometimes the micas can clump up and it'll be hiding at the bottom of the container so just make sure you're mi mixing very thoroughly so you won't have that problem <music>
for the fun part. For today's design, I'm going to do an in the pot swirl, which means I'm gonna take my pink and my brown soap batter and pour it directly into my white soap batter. As you can see me doing here, I'm just pouring it in a circular motion, scraping all of my soap out of my container. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my brown soap, just pour it in a circular motion, try to penetrate to the bottom of the soap so it can go through the white part. Do one quick swirl so it doesn't get too muddy, but mix just the right amount. And then I'm gonna pour it into my soap mold. This is a three pound soap mold, which is about 48 ounces. So it's gonna hold 48 ounces. My recipe today is 50 ounces because I know the soap mold can hold a little bit more than that. And I kinda like my soap to be all the way at the top of my mold. Make sure you scrape that container really good because we want no soap left behind. No soap should be going to waste. So we're gonna pour that on top here and then we're gonna bang our mold on the floor a little bit just so if we have any air bubbles or air pockets or anything, the soap can move down and fill in those air pockets. <music> So this is the part where we texture the soap top. Now, right now I'm gonna try a few different things. I really had no idea how I wanted to texture this top. So you're just gonna see me try a few things and then ultimately decide on something that I felt was sufficient. to look at that our Japanese cherry blossom soap is complete and I love the way I textured that top that is beautiful now I'm gonna come back and show you the final cut of the soap <music> So we are back. I let the soap sit in the mold for a full 24 hours. I needed to give it enough time to solidify so I won't have any issues demolding and cutting the bars. And look at that, that swirl came out beautiful. I am in love. I'm just gonna go through here and just show you the different bars because every bar is unique. No two bars look the same. Uh, so just so you know um, the soap does need 30 days to cure because we use that lye water the water is in the soap right now and we have to give it time to evaporate so a full 30 days is enough time to evaporate so you have a nice solid bar of soap so thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you like it please like it and also subscribe we have more videos on the way thank you Thank you.